Yes, we are on. Okay, so welcome everybody. And uh, I'm Fabio Nascimbeni representing UNIMED, the Euro-Mediterranean University Union. And um, I, we are all here to, to this webinar organized by the Jovital project with three uh, aims uh, we were discussing before with the colleagues uh, to know what, why are we doing this. So first of all, this webinar is a celebration of mobility, of students' mobility in, in these troubled time. You know, we are organizing this in the frame of the Erasmus days. The Erasmus Plus program is supporting uh, Jovital and its partners. And so we are happily part of this celebration, mobility is uh, under attack by, by social distancing. So we are living in, in difficult times for, for mobility, but uh, luckily uh, technology and, and uh, approaches like the one of Jovital were there before and are becoming even more relevant now because uh, we are <clears throat> here discussing and, and advancing on, uh, on virtual collaboration and on trying to find ways uh, to support meaningful and inclusive mobility and collaboration among our students and staff. So it's uh, Jovital, I would say, is, is, is more uh, actual and relevant now than it has ever been. So this is, uh, again, is the first of, important uh, point. Australia. Second important point, uh, second objective, we are here to promote the project finding, to let you all know about the project finding and uh, to engage you. So if you are successful after this uh, webinar, a number of universities will write back to us and tell us uh, we want to do this as well. We want to embark in the Jovital adventure too. So we have uh, we are ready actually with, to, to transfer to other universities in Jordan and outside Jordan. I welcome some colleagues here, some participants from Lebanon and Tunisia and maybe others. So welcome again. We had also registers from Algeria, Algeria and other countries. And then the, the third <clears throat> the third ob objective is to get some feedback from you, from the participants. You will hear a lot about our findings. At the end of, uh, of the webinar, we will also present you a new uh, piece of work we are doing. And uh, let's say we, we, we still have a few months to go with our project, project until next April. And of course, this is a, is a moment where we are going public with uh, stakeholders, target, target users and and experts like you, and so we would like to to get uh, to get feedback. We think the number of participants is perfect for this, so it's nice to see people there. So feel free. We'll try to get to be brief with the presentations and to have some space. I will I will be keeping the time as much as possible to allow all of you to give us our your feedback and hopefully to improve together. Having said this, I will stop and uh, I will. Uh, just a small change in the agenda. We won't have Nancy uh, Ayarmech with us. Uh, so it means we are having a few more minutes for discussion, but, and we are having uh, Eric Schopp uh, as the first presentation uh, from uh, Technical University of Dresden in German. He's the Jovital project uh, leader. And so we would like to hear from Eric about the Jovital project and uh, the whole adventure. Where, where are we in this, uh, in this project? Thank you very much, Fabio, for the introduction. Hello to everybody. I try to share my screen just a second. So. All good. I, okay, now how get I rid of this? Mini miniaturize this. Okay, so welcome everybody. I am asked instead of Dr. Visam Tavili, postdoc at my chair and the practical uh, um, manager of our Jovital project to give this introductory presentation on his behalf because he can't speak today but he's listening and participating remotely. So it's about the Jovital project. My name is Eric Schoep. Now, let's see, now we have to go here. Fine. Um, I had the chair of Wirtschaftsinformatik Information Management at Technische Universität Dresden in Germany. In the middle of this screen, you see where Dresden is allocated in the Eastern middle part of Germany. Um, on the left side of this screen, you see our research focus in the last 20 years. Now, 
culminating in the actual debate of digital transformation. You see two pillars, corporate communications and knowledge management, very important for business organizations, but it's all about communities to develop and to support and to manage. So it's community management we are really focusing upon and the digital transformation of communities is to be done in knowledge communities and in learning communities. So if it comes to the e-learning discussion, we see this as a digitalization of learning processes and those are done mostly collaboratively. That's the issue of our impulse. And so we started the Jovital project with renowned partners from uh, Coventry University in UK, ISSBS from Slovenia, the International School for Social and Business Studies, Unimed from Italy, the Mediterranean Universities Union, and our university, Technische Universität Dresden in Germany, with Jordanian partners, PSUT, Princess Sumaya University for Technology, Just Jordan University of Science and Technology, GJU, the German Jordanian University, H AHU, Al Hussein bin Talal University, and last but not least, TTU, Tafila Technical University. This is a 36 month project. It should have ended by now, but due to the pandemic situation, the project was extended until April next year, budget approximately 1 million euro. It's an Erasmus Plus program. We run KA2 capacity building in the field of higher education. So what's the idea? It's all about virtual mobility. We see as a problem in the target country, Jordania, but not only there, limited interactive teaching and physical academic mobility experience at Jordanian higher education institutions. The solution we provide in our Jovital project is introducing problem-based learner-centered teaching and learning practices founded on constructivist and connectivist theories and facilitated by digital social interaction tools. The target groups of the project are students, teachers, and universities. So it's about practice relevant courses, learning with peer abroad, bringing together international mixed student teams so that they gain intercultural and language skills. They catch international experience at home and we can also integrate disadvantaged groups. Teachers are trained with e-teaching capacity building, better students engagement, how to do that, how to integrate the students, how to uh, foster interactivity, etc. Academic visits, staff mobility, I will come to that in a second. For the universities, it's very relevant. It's a wider outreach. We establish best practices and we integrate our Jordanian partners into the European higher education network. What are the main objectives? We qualify teaching staff at Jordanian higher education institutions to adopt modern pedagogical and didactical methodologies in virtual learning settings. We support Jordanian higher education institutions in designing and implementing effective ICT-based internationalization at home. And this is integrated in a global virtual mobility network. And we open up Jordanian higher education institutions to integrate disadvantaged groups like coming from rural areas or refugees in the camps and actual discussion in Jordania. And, and we want to integrate them in immersive virtual collaborative learning environments. So let me come to the background quite shortly. What is virtual collaborative learning? VCL as we abbreviate it. We started at TU Dresden already in the year 2001 with Polish partners, partners from Poland. It's about virtual mobility. We wanted to integrate students in one classroom, in a virtual classroom and have mixed student teams collaborating in groups, benefiting from the experience and the social and cultural background of their other peers from other countries. 
learning is the issue. The students want to gain new knowledge and experience by doing, by solving complex tasks in complex case studies over six to eight weeks. And it's all done virtually online and we use new communication channels. And all participating students get the credits and grading from these courses. So these are well-established modules in the local uh, environments, study environments. VCL exists of four key elements I just want to introduce shortly. Let me start with realistic cases and working tasks. It's about authenticity. It's about situative learning. So we have complex cases from the real world where students see their input as being relevant for society for their later business environment. And from those case stories, weekly tasks are derived and those tasks are open tasks and demand the students to discuss them, to find solutions. That is not a giving of content, but it's an acquaintance of experience from the other peers and working on the cases without a given best solution. And so students are led to, to collaborate in authentic environments. They use a technical platform. We had different technical platforms and principally it is of, it doesn't matter which platform you use as long as this platform is a social media platform. It allows collaboration. It allows the participants to get acquainted to each other, to build up trust in virtuality, to see the background and to use modern interaction tools like chatting, like video sessions like downloading, uploading, collaboratively writing in documents, etc. The third key element is we apply learning analytics and we visualize the data information gained from learning analytics. We visualize it in dashboards. Those dashboards give, this is the fourth of the four elements, professional um, e-tutors who support and supervise the learning teams in virtuality, we give them uh, dashboard information about the performance of teams of specific persons so that they get early information about somebody dropping out, having technical problems or a team having some communication problem or there could even be some misunderstanding or there could develop conflicts and the uh, E-tutors as pedagogically qualified support staff, they intervene and try to lead the team to a good solution in the end of the course. So let me come to the project outcomes. Firstly, it's all about capacity building. So 168 staff members from nine Jordanian universities up to now participated in four trainings in Jordan and two observation visits to Germany and the UK. Secondly, the VCL courses. VCL activities were integrated in more than 15 teaching modules at the individual Jordanian universities. And one common national VCL pilot uh, just finished in the last month the course was offered to students from the five Jordanian universities coming together in mixed teams working on common tasks. Project outcome three is a virtual community. The Jovital learning space nowadays includes over 700 members, students and academics in over 120 groups. Number four, local e-tutors. We want to roll out the experience how to guide virtual learning teams. So 27 students from Jordanian universities were qualified at Technische Universität Dresden to act as e-tutors for the coming generations of learners in the virtual classroom. Learning spaces. 
we established five villas, virtual innovative learning labs at our Jordanian partner universities, well equipped and being the technical backbone to roll out individually um, uh, um, VCL courses in future to support virtual mobility within Jordan and um, to reach out to other foreign participants. And outcome number six, the students inclusion. Over 120 students attended. We had five awareness sessions at five different locations in Jordan. 42 refugees and disadvantaged learners attended an information session on virtual learning near Zaatari camp in Northern Jordan. So we got them sensitized for the potential to participate, even if not physically allowed to move, participate virtually and get access to higher education and get access to modern learning environments and information. So this was very shortly the intention of the Jovital project. There's still half a year to run and we are looking forward to the next VCL course. It will be an VCL course reaching out internationally and organized by our Jordanian partners themselves because in the last two years, they gained a lot of experience in collaborating with the European partners. And thus we are very, very expectant on the results of the next half year's classes. Thank you for your audience. Thank you very much, Eric. So as you have heard, uh, the, I would say Jovital is a prototypical good practice where you have something which has been developed for many years uh, in, in this case in Europe. And, which has been then uh, worked together with the Jordanian partners, uh, uh, even changed in some, in, some, in some facets and then developed first jointly. And now it is the time when the, the, the Jordanian partners will be running this on their own. And as I was saying before, we are expecting it, it is also the moment in the project where we are inviting others to do it. So this methodology, as you have heard, is not uh, Rocket science is not something <clears throat> incredibly difficult, neither in technological terms nor in terms of needed staff, or I would say even funding, but it can have a, a very important impact. You heard inclusion, you heard uh, even we did uh, test this uh, with, with refugee and, uh, and disadvantaged students. So it's, uh, and again, this is really, I would say the, the moment to, to invest some time in possibly implementing this. So please, everything we have heard uh, is uh, in detail in the Jovital website. We will share also the presentation of Eric with you later if you want to share it with your colleagues at the university to convince them, to convince your, your leaders that this is something worth exploring. And again, on the website, we have the possibility to express interest to become a, a future tester or a future implementer of this methodology. So feel free to explore the website and to, to express your, your interest there. All right, now, uh, together with uh, teaching, uh, um, also internationalization and with mobility, also internationalization uh, have, has received, uh, I would say, a big uh, hit by the uh, crisis and this, uh, the consequences of this. And so we are now entering into a, into a, a presentation where we are hearing from uh, a European and the Jordanian colleague two colleagues actually, two partners of Jovital, where we will discuss virtual collaborative learning as a strategy for specifically internationalization, actually, it's, uh, which is another, another important component of university's life which shouldn't be left alone since we're only thinking now of teaching and how to get online with teaching. Uh, it, internationalization is also at the core of Jovital and is also at the core of the concerns of all of us. So I think, uh, uh, Catherine, you will go first and then you'll be joined by Adi. So floor is yours. I think you can share your joint presentation. And in the meantime, if uh, my message for the participants, if you have some questions about the presentation of Eric, please feel free to use the chat. We don't want to interrupt the flow, but feel free to use the chat to ask questions and we will pick them up with Eric uh, later on. Catherine, please. I think you are muted.
Excuse yeah. me. Is that better? I'm sorry. That's much better. <laughs> Excuse me. So, thank you um, to Fabio for the introduction. So, yes, I'm Catherine Wimpenny from Coventry University. Very pleased to be in this session with Adi, um, who's from Princess Sumatra University in Jordan. So as Fabio shared in this next part of the session, um, we're going to start with some wider context sharing um, before really going into some of the key activities of the project um, and how we've been planning and implementing virtual collaborative learning. So, so, sorry, I hear, I hear some noise. I don't know if... Uh... Well, I'm asking everybody to switch off their mic. And I don't know, Catherine, if uh, I don't think it comes from you. So if everybody, anybody can just switch off their mic. Thank you. Thank you. So um, as Wissam uh, and, and Eric have shared in this in the overview, that um, this is a very much a multi-level and organic intervention that job it is, um, is, is, is working on. And here, um, another wonderful photograph of our consortium which was taken at Coventry University on one of the partner visits. Um, so yes, we have our five Jordanian universities and our four European institutions all working together. We are to just think around internationalization in higher education. There's no doubt that um, around the globe, the sector is under pressure to strategic demands to internationalize curricula not only so that students can acquire their intercultural capabilities as global citizens, as global graduates, ready for further study, for the world of work, for being in communities and making change, but the international higher education community itself um, needs to really continue to ride the wave, anticipating and preparing for all the changes that go on around knowledge exchange, not least cross-sectoral implementation of um, sustainable development goals, for example, as society's global challenges. And of course, with COVID-19, we're seeing again, the international higher education community has to ride the wave of, of trying to manage and, and prepare and think about post-COVID um, education and where we need to take our practices. From the beginning of our project, we've really always thought about the role and responsibilities of a 21st century university. And back in 2018, um, we were talking then with Professor Adele Twezy from the Jordanian Education Ministry of, about this importance um, of you know, the Industrial Revolution, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, and this major responsibility for universities in terms of, of being societal leaders in learning. We also spoke with Professor Ahmed Abu El Haji, um, who is senior consultant for ICT and education and head of the Erasmus National Office in Jordan. And again, we were acknowledging the legislation, the policy, calling for international co cooperation between higher education institutions and very much about the development of capacities for academic staff and administrative staff, not least in digital learning as well as teaching and research. So this fed very well into the Jobital project aims. And we can look at internationalization and the online learning opportunities. We can see that online learning as part of internationalization really enables learning to reach those who have been previously disadvantaged by geography or social cultural issues, and also the opportunity that the online offering enables learners to learn at their own pace and at any time, at any work. However, we also recognized at the outset of the project that in order to be effective, there needs to be a very clear underpinning, robust pedagogical approach and not an overemphasis on technology in itself, um, because it was about the importance and effectiveness and the richness of teaching and learning and what that could offer. So as Eric has shared, virtual collaborative learning has been a really fertile space for our internationalized curriculum. And virtual collaborative learning may be known by other words. It may be known as virtual collaborative exchange, virtual mobility at Coventry, 
we call it collaborative online international learning, which is another term as well used in the international community for this type of pedagogy. And as Rubin states, this isn't about the technology or the technology platform necessarily, but really this approach to teaching and learning and this ability for um, teachers, for students, wider communities to communicate directly and immediately or in asynchronously um, with peers for learning exchange and for richness of education opportunity. And also as Eric shared, this is within the internationalization at home curriculum. Very much about internationalization for all students. Because as we know, even pre COVID, mobility as a form of internationalization of the curriculum was not something that all students could access and maybe was offered really to perhaps um, the traveling elite. And we really need international curriculum to reach everybody. It's for all students, it's everybody's business. So we know that this exchange offers this opportunity for establishing a clear structure of some tasks that have learning outcomes that are intentional and meaningful and which bring together staff and students and learning communities in different parts of the world together uh, with a common area of focus and an area of focus that isn't necessarily able to be achieved by one person looking at it alone. So it requires this perspective um, of needing one another. And I think it's important to add that Jovital's approach to virtual collaborative learning wasn't to start off immediately with the international dimension, but to do a stepwise approach, very much focusing on a national um, focus on what collaborative learning could offer across universities in the country. I just wanted to show a little bit more about the offering of virtual collaborative exchange for global citizenship and thinking about the opportunities that this sort of learning really offers the internationalized curriculum. Certainly we can look at the way in which it encourages international and intercultural communication to really be able to look at the world, to be able to understand one's views of oneself um, and to have respect and tolerance and understanding of other colleagues' views, other students' views and different geographies in education contexts. As such, it really values the opportunity for knowledge pluralization, not relying on Western canons of knowledge, but really decentering that to really look at the ways in which we can benefit from richer knowledge from across our international education context. And as such, this provides this space to work cooperatively, to work collaboratively on problem solving complex issues, wicked problems, we might say, for example, the SDGs. Certainly we know it's about digital fluency and within that the skills to be able to understand about privacy, to be able to understand about online identities and to understand about facilitation of ways to know and learn and be with others. And not only is this a focus for the disciplines because the richness of understanding disciplines through an international perspective is so key, but this space also really lends itself well to cross disciplinary, interdisciplinary and trans. But this isn't always for the faint hearted. This approach is complex and it can take some thinking through to design it well and to do it well, not least in thinking about how to facilitate effective virtual interaction. We can't assume that learners will just necessarily feel at ease in this space, nor will academics necessarily feel at ease immediately in a space um, where we're trying to think about scaffolding contributions and perspectives, where we're trying to facilitate opportunity to stimulate students' reflection and staff's reflection on our own biases, our own privileges and assumptions. And so we really understand about the importance of thinking about this carefully, thinking it through, so that's the meaningful use of people's time and space. So for the project, um, just to show a little bit about how we set about understanding the context that we're working within, there was a, a real focus on the a, a needs analysis, thinking about the Jordanian higher education context, sharing the European context, 
and having interviews, as mentioned, with experts um, from government and policy, as well in, as in the education communities and the universities. We did a country report looking at the state of the art for Georgian and the ambition. We looked at institutional reports of resources locally for staff and students and uh, appetite for virtual collaborative learning. We did this through expert forums and focus groups, and we used known tools like the GISC DIC Comp tool, digital competencies tool, um, which really looks at issues around information and data literacy, communication, collaboration, et cetera, digital content creation. So we used the tool, but in addition, we looked at issues around barriers and enablers at the university sites, which would inform the action plan of our project. And these recommendations from the needs analysis enabled the work packages that we've seen and Derek has described in terms of what's been happening commence. And uh, there's a reference that we can provide, which provides the full analysis report of, um, of what we did, really looking at um, issues around teaching and learning for internationalization and the focus on Jordan. I'd say in summary from what I wanted to share that overall it's been very evident that um, each university is in its, uh, on its own path within this, you know, there was differences across the institutions as there is across the institutions in Europe as well. Um, and this relates to perceived requirements for training and development and how people feel they already are equipped with the necessary capabilities, while others were wanting to have more support and training. But what was clear and has been clear is that we knew that our practice would be most beneficial, most beneficial, sorry, um, through these on, on, ongoing supportive mechanisms using um, our community of practice frame. At this stage, I'll hand over to Adi to continue on. Thank you so much, Catherine. And uh, I'll um, echo what uh, has been presented so far by uh, Dr. Eric and Dr. Catherine on uh, this project. Um, so that uh, I'll also keep it as short as possible to open the um, chance for our participants uh, to ask and participate if you have any questions uh, so far. Uh, so uh, the areas of focus of Jobital, as mentioned before, um, where uh, to take an overview about the institutional level and the institutional situation of the five partners in um, in Jordan, and um, I think that uh, they give a, a whole a optimistic idea of what we can do in the near future in terms of e-learning in general as an as a big umbrella of online teaching, online learning, and also the new term that uh, we all have uh, been studying and uh, conducting which is VCL, that stands for Virtual Collaborative Learning. And I think that uh, there are many aspects to look at it from the guiding policy strategies, uh, also uh, the academic staff involvement and training in order to foster more creativity in their set of uh, skills and how to also um, re-manage their uh, pedagogical skills into um, uh, online teaching at first level and then to uh, going to the next level with uh, VCL, what's the difference between both and how can we conduct our online courses uh, in both models? That was one of the first, uh, you know, uh, steps that we had to uh, take uh, in order to um, uh, distribute awareness of that um, uh, model to our instructors who are becoming more familiar, more and more familiar with um, uh, e-learning in general, online education in specific, and then uh, VCL in even more specific details. So uh, we had the staff training from uh, five uh, universities joining us, and then we uh, moved to uh, e-tutor uh, training that, uh, uh, as showed by um, uh, Eric in his presentation, uh, when they um, uh, actually went to just then to take um, excessive actually uh, training on how to administer um, the virtual collaborative platforms and uh, what to look for, what are the metrics, how to you know, ma maintain the quality of learning and collaboration between different members. Um, therefore, we, uh, after that stage, we uh, went, uh, felt that uh, after you know, the preliminary establishment of VCL practices into certain courses in the different universities, Jordan universities, we found that uh, maybe we can take uh, some feedback from the students 
and the feedback was initially positive. So um, uh, we encouraged, we, we've been encouraged to continue uh, and uh, conducted the national VCL course, which was um, uh, finished recently. And the feedback so far that we've got is um, uh, very positive and encouraging us even to do more, which is uh, the final step that we are reaching right now is the international VCL common course. We wanted to take it from the national level uh, uh, and go beyond boundaries to reach uh, international level with the VCL common course. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? So experiment of national courses, I would also uh, mention here that um, some of the feedback or uh, points that we've got from our students, uh, so whether in PSUT as a local player in the um, Jovitel um, um, project, uh, or uh, it would maybe echo some of the feedbacks and reviews that were received by other students in other universities. Uh, they, they, they showed uh, a lot of excitement. They um, have uh, so much um, of positive feedback uh, by uh, showing how that affected their learning uh, spectrum and learning, uh, I would say, pace uh, when they try to collaborate and communicate actually with students and peer students from other universities uh, especially for those who are maybe also in the same specialization or even in the different specialization. For example, if uh, some student from uh, um, IT uh, is collaborating or in the same group of a student from English language or English literacy, they would try to find a common way to communicate and then to collaborate on a common project inside a certain topic in the course. This thing that, ha that was I would say um, um, never available before uh, for many students before that uh, because that's due to the nature of VCL and I think that what lies at the heart of VCL um, is the uh, intercultural aspect intercultural aspect and the interdisciplinary aspect both inter being intercultural and inter interdisciplinary is I think what um, makes it powerful uh, a powerful model um, intercultural for many reasons, multicultures or different cultures or different people at different countries may think differently about certain topics and certain subjects. So that would add a flavor and uh, uh, a colorful experience to uh, the, the whole learning process. And for the interdisciplinary, you know, uh, for sharing different views from different angles, would also enrich the learning uh, process, I believe. So what about giving all of that together for the students to, in order to enrich the learning process? Not only that, uh, somebody would argue uh, in many research that found uh, maybe online education is doing the same thing when I post a MOOC, for example, which stands, as we all know, massive open online course, and it, uh, I um, open it for a massive um, uh, number of um, uh, participants. They're coming from different views and different uh, parts of the world. So I'm achieving the same learning outcome as VCL. So what's new? I would say, and I would argue or counter argue that argument is that VCL is actually built by multicultural instruction. Instructors, for example, when they built uh, a certain course, we see nowadays that MOOCs are being published by a certain university uh, solo one by itself, and then it, they would publish it to the world. Uh, depending on the reputation of that university, etc., maybe this course would have the chance to be expanded and then reached um, uh, worldwide. But then what about other universities who maybe would not get this, uh, this chance? Maybe VCL would have, uh, would uh, provide them with, with this uh, chance uh, by, um, uh, you know, um, uh, trying to note this difference uh, uh, by first collaborating between multiple instructors and designers to build this course and then provide it with uh, uh, for um, uh, multinational uh, uh, students and participants. And I think that's uh, the case with VCL. It's intercultural and interdisciplinary from the beginning, from the very first step when it's being designed and developed and then published uh, to the rest of the world. So that's um, um, uh, our idea of what we've got right now. And uh, we are keen to continue in the phases of uh, developing even more and more national courses, national VCL courses and international VCL courses. Uh, I would also uh, support the idea of the need for strategic movement 
uh, and involving more uh, intercultural sense and thinking when we are building pedagogical practices into our online courses from now on. And um, I think that uh, our students loved it. The, uh, one of the things and comments that uh, I've received from PSCT students and some other students in other universities, maybe my colleagues uh, who are attending right now from GJU, Just uh, and Tafila, uh, and Al Hussein University, they are re very respected universities and uh, they can even share even more insights about that. I think many things uh, um, that have been received and one of the notable uh, comments, and I'm reading and quoting one of the students, I love learning many things in such a short time. I repeat, I love learning many things in such a short time. Uh, so that's one of the BCL uh, practices that has been uh, blended in one of the students' courses. And uh, maybe uh, he actually had the idea to compare between the same maybe subject that has been taught over uh, like multiple weeks and how much and how rich was that when it was implemented in a VCL model. I think that would summarize everything. Uh, one last note I would say is that maybe the pandemic when it came right now to show us the importance of going maybe online and seeing the importance of getting connected with different people from different parts of the world. I don't like to link online learning in general to COVID-19. I don't like this uh, linkage actually. Maybe we can start thinking strategically and influence also the decision makers in Jordan and around the world to uh, retake another look at uh, e-learning in general online MOOCs and then VCL specifically, uh, because I think VCL has a huge potential, uh, not only in Jordan, but around the world to um, uh, actually help decision makers mm -hmm. to uh, edit uh, their regulations and uh, even come up with innovative uh, uh, ideas and how to adopt this model and better shape the learning experience in all the universities. Thank you so much for listening to us and Happy to hear any comments or questions. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine and uh, Adi. I mean, it was a perfect, perfect, perfect joint work, starting from the big picture and then going to the student, the individual student, which is actually our, our main concern here. Actually, you, you received one question, but I think it is the most important one. So it's better to have one very good question that we can then elaborate on also later on, that is by, by, by um, uh, Dr. Maher Al-Haber, who is wondering if there is the possibility to join uh, our working group, in this case, uh, your work group, uh, thinking about the, the, the Jordan universities who are, who are bringing this forward. And uh, we some uh, correctly replied that, of course, uh, it is possible, but I wanted, before moving to the more strategic level with, uh, with Mohammed, I just wanted to hear from you, I don't know, Eric, or maybe also from you, Wadi. I mean, in Jordan, you, have, you are working on this, not only within your university, as you said, but with other universities. So if there is another university who, has not, who is not a partner of Jovital, apart from getting in touch with us, of course, but what can they do now until, until we are funded by the European Commission and also in the future? Yes, I think... Um... Uh, now, uh, well, with two things that I can answer this question, uh, is that uh, there is still a room of uh, training that uh, we need to conduct uh, within the um, premises of the Jovital project, uh, and it uh, has to reach uh, multiple uh, instructors in uh, Jordan outside of the borders of uh, uh, five partners. So uh, definitely Al-Balqa is more than welcome to join uh, when we distribute and uh, announce uh, that uh, workshop. Afterwards, the effect of uh, Jovital uh, project needs to uh, sustain and uh, to maintain this sustainability, uh, so to speak, uh, for the next three, four, five years, maybe other type of consortiums can be uh, established in order to gather uh, more Jordanian universities uh, under this model. So Al-Balqa University, very, very well established and well reputed university. Uh, we are more than excited to have you on board with us. Uh, on the next phase. Inshallah, we will share contacts together and um, to keep in touch uh, regarding this. Fantastic. I'm already ticking the box of the engagement objective of this webinar. So it's uh, very, very important. Thank you both. 
Okay, so we are a bit late, uh, and so I would like to move since you, 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 let's say, hinted to the possibility of more Jordanian universities. I would say even all Jordanian universities could be uh, starting with this model, of course, depending on the interest and then the, on the capabilities. But at the same time, you need to have also some uh, something, um, let's say, a, a positive reception from above. Of course, so it's uh, this is something which. Uh, if it has to work in an ecosystem, also policymakers and the system as a whole must be moving towards innovation. And uh, I would like to ask now Mohammad to, um, to tell us about the challenges and opportunities of virtual collaborative learning in Jordan. I think with an eye also, here I'm talking to the non-Jordanian colleagues that, that this could happen exactly the same in your, in your countries as well. And I'm especially, if you can tell us something about what is moving in Jordan. No? There are some uh, important news and it seems that the system is becoming more receptive towards this. So Mohammed, floor is yours. Uh, you're muted. Now it's good? Good. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, this is Mohamed Dawood from the German Jordanian University. We're part of uh, the Jobital uh, project and uh, we have um, uh, gone through this pandemic experience during this project and witnessed uh, uh, some changes in Jordan in uh, reaction to the pandemic which affected online teaching. So uh, I will start with uh, thanking Eric, uh, Catherine, and Adi for the nice talks and for Fabio for uh, coordinating this uh, nice webinar. So um, the goal of uh, this uh, small presentation is to talk about the challenges and opportunities of virtual collaborative learning in Jordan. And in more general, we can talk about the e-learning uh, in general as uh, virtual collaborative learning can be uh, put as part of that uh, broader uh, teaching approach. Uh, so, um, um, we talk about the challenges uh, of uh, virtual collaborative learning in Jordan. Um, now we have a transition, I think, and uh, this is happening in most um, countries in the Middle East and um, if we compare Europe and with the Middle East, Europe has already established the implementation of online teaching tools um, and they have done um, a nice job in that regard. Uh, while in the Middle East and Jordan, uh, we uh, have uh, been uh, at some point, uh, uh, we had open universities working uh, for, since the 90s and at the second stage, there were some regulations limiting the access to open education and the uh, emphasis on uh, the face-to-face -face or conventional learning. Uh, so um, what happened uh, recently is that uh, the Ministry of Higher Education in Jordan, um, I think four years or five years ago, were asking universities to uh, foster and encourage uh, e-learning in general and to try to use this uh, approach in the teaching and they allow the, up to 25% of the curricula. So each program can have a maximum of 25% to be taught uh, online, in which virtual collaborative learning can serve in that regard. Now, uh, the challenges were the culture. So uh, the, for, that's the biggest challenge. People would not really appreciate the importance of uh, this teaching approach compared to face-to-face. -to -face. So most people would prefer to uh, uh, send their, um, uh, to from. And as I mentioned, the regulations were part of uh, that um, uh, cultural resistance, but these regulations are, are currently changing now. Uh, during, um, uh, also, um, since this teaching approach is not really uh, used in a wide, um, uh, aspect, in wide um, spectrum in Jordan, uh, there is a lack for instructors training for the use of online teaching approaches and uh, including uh, virtual collaborative learning. Also technological support, uh, again, we, something that is not used commonly, uh, you don't expect to see good uh, infrastructure support. We have good technological infrastructure for teaching in general, but not like uh, having uh, uh, 
extra preparation for delivering uh, full courses uh, to be online, and especially if the course is asynchronous, because when, once we talk about uh, the online courses, there are two approaches. So either synchronous, the professor and students go online, or asynchronous, which in which material is prepared ahead, and uh, the, 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 the professor is more of a facilitator. The students should access the educational material and um, do the study on their own, and there's some meetings to coordinate and answer questions. So this is the image just before the uh, corona pandemic. Now, after, uh, again, there were some interest in the ministry um, uh, during uh, this, uh, maybe these few years to change and to adapt e-learning. And um, again, as I mentioned, the, the institutions were asked to do some steps to implement up to 25% uh, of their teaching to be online. Now, uh, during, in March, in middle of March, all universities in Jordan were asked to shut down and to switch to online teaching. And that was a huge change of the whole teaching approach. So now everyone is doing teaching online or students are attending the lectures. And to, to give you more uh, information about the situation in March and April, basically we were under care view and this care view were, were uh, enforced by the government and actually well accepted by the people uh, so that they reduce the infection rates and they did a good job at that time so in jordan the uh, the uh, cases of corona were really small so uh, in the house if you can think about it the, the dad is sitting in his home he's not doing his work the mother maybe the same and the only functioning process that is, or maybe not the only, one of the few functioning processes that were functioning nicely uh, is the uh, teaching, uh, uh, the teaching industry, let's call it. So schools and universities, everyone uh, is, is working and the professors are delivering their lectures online and students are attending these lectures. Now, there was a huge uh, challenge at that point because as mentioned, there are these limitations, cultural change, infrastructure support, instructor uh, uh, training, uh, and uh, things were done quickly. So the, uh, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Higher Education were trying to provide the infrastructures. We had, as I mentioned, good infrastructures in terms of supporting conventional learning. So they tried to use whatever they had to support more of uh, the e-learning. Some universities were ahead of other universities uh, uh, in terms of e-learning. But the good thing is that it was forced that uh, Jordanian professors and students are using this teaching approach. Uh, and it was one of the few things are functioning nicely in the country. So that was good to convince uh, the society about the importance of online teaching, about the potential of online teaching. And this has caused a huge cultural change that would not happen if we did not go through this pandemic. At the same time, due to the lag in the preparation and the, um, for some universities and some, some schools, because if all, all education was done online during in March and, and April, uh, even for schools in June, because schools uh, ended in June, the school level, uh, due to the lack of the preparation, uh, I am afraid personally that this teaching experience might reflect also badly about the potential of, of this teaching approach. So now we have made this culture approach to convince people that this is an important um, uh, learning uh, approach that, that we can use in our teaching, but it's done not perfectly. So you can imagine some people, if, if I have a children in school, maybe if, if he's going to university, maybe I, this is something I, would don't, I don't want to, to go back again in the same time. So there are two aspects in terms of cultural change. But I can see that uh, in, at the university levels, at least, there are um, uh, th there is a positive aspect that we can build on. Also, uh, the regulations have changed. So in um, in uh, uh, 
um, in May or in June, actually, June, June this year, uh, the uh, ministry and the commission that, regulate, that regulates the uh, higher education in Jordan have issued new regulations. And this regulation has, for the first time, allowed full online programs in Jordan. And you can see that in March and April, we have gone through this um, enforced uh, online teaching for all universities and schools. Just three months after that, uh, the um, ministry and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the commission that regulates on higher education in Jordan issued new regulations for for uh, for allowing online programs uh, to be uh, done fully online. Uh, so you can, for for example, have computer science as a face-to-face -face program, but you can also have computer science uh, as a, uh, a full online program. There are some restrictions, some rules, but it's allowed. Um, also, the regulations have, again, um, another set of regulations have been issued to... Yeah, um, I think there's some noise. Um, yes, I think yeah. it, the mic was now closed. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, um, again, um, yeah, so we had another set of regulations that enforce uh, or actually uh, foster and encourage universities for the blending approach. And they um, have uh, put a limit of up to 25%, uh, and they put more uh, kind of clear guidelines uh, for, for the preparation needed, the units that need to establish to support this kind of teaching. Uh, but uh, just one, a few days ago, um, in the news, they, they're saying they're increasing this percentage from 25% to 50%. Uh, so any program that is blended, um, you can use up to 50% of this program to be online. Uh, they say 20, 2022, uh, so from 20 to, uh, 20 to 2022, uh, this regulation will be valid. We don't know in the future what will happen, but for these three years, uh, we have um, up to 50%. Uh, this uh, cultural change and this change in the regulations have made an important strategic change in the university level. So many universities in Jordan now are working to establish online programs. And I hear that some of them have already submitted to the ministry request to open full online programs. Um, also, uh, in which virtual collaboration can serve uh, a very important role. Um, some universities who have special um, situation like German Jordan University. So for us, we, we need, we, we, as part of our programs, we sent our students for one year in Germany, six of these, six months of these, this one year, they study uh, in uh, German partner universities and six months they work on German partner uh, companies. So for us uh, now, we're, we're uh, considering how can we uh, strengthen our German dimension our, and our European dimension using online teaching. We can ask universities um, from, um, uh, we can ask professors from German universities, for example, to teach in our courses. And this is very important for, uh, um, okay, just one second. Uh, so uh, we can ask professors from, uh, from uh, Germany, for example, uh, to teach at GGU, and we call it virtual flying faculty. And you can imagine how this is important for people who are going to Germany to get uh, uh, um, uh, an instructor from G German partner university teaching their technical courses in a German language. This is very important for them because they're anyhow coming to Germany after maybe uh, one year or so. Uh, we're also thinking about expanding our international collaboration, um, maybe establishing some programs. Uh, so this, the same thing is happening for other universities. Each university is thinking now, how can we benefit from these opportunities that were not allowed before? Also, we're, we're thinking to target new students from outside Jordan. Um, I think this is a common goal for most universities and fostering uh, international collaboration. So uh, you can see within this uh, few months, uh, many things have happened. The whole country has gone through for at least two months of online teaching. 
Um, this was an important functioning part of the whole country, which convinced the uh, higher authorities and even the individuals, the people, about the importance of this teaching approach. This will for sure open new opportunities for new uh, teaching um, uh, approaches, uh, similar to what has been done in Europe previously. So example includes um, the uh, people who are working on uh, uh, during uh, their uh, uh, morning day, day time, they cannot come to regular programs, but this will enable, if we open online programs, this will enable this type of targeted uh, students to join uh, um, new approaches of online teaching, including virtual collaboration. Uh, you can uh, reduce the amount of time that students are required to be on campus by offering some students some courses to be online and open the uh, opportunities for students to join companies while they're doing their studies, similar to the world program uh, degrees in which students can work in company and study. All of these opportunities are thought, uh, and all of these opportunities are um, uh, being explored by putting strategies in the institutional level. And I think we'll see quick changes uh, in, in the coming years in Jordan. And I expect the same thing is happening also in the uh, Middle East uh, countries. So that was a quick uh, overview about uh, the, what, what we have seen recently, the things we did not imagine that could happen at the beginning of 2022. So I would say, despite the, the coronavirus pandemic, all these problems we have gone through, but I can see that some opportunities that we can open uh, do, uh, and we can learn from our experience during this pandemic. Thank you for your uh, listening. Thank you very much, Mohammed. This is, uh, I would say, I mean, a moment of luck in the yeah. unlucky general situation. Actually, many, many countries around the world are now starting to do the same as you did in Jordan, but you did it before the pandemic. So it's very interesting to see this, uh, you know, and this out of the discussion, if I understood well, it was already started before, and then uh, the pandemic so has. Uh, Possibly yeah. accelerated it, so, so it's. Uh, I think it's it's very interesting development, and from a from a human perspective, I, I we are we are checking with our members of our uh, sub network of learning and open education, and as far as we know, there is not not other country in the South Med region who has actually go, are, who is going through this process. So it would be interesting. Also, maybe we can think also out of Jovital about a webinar where you, you could present this to the other uh, yeah. members because this is a, an extremely interesting development in the, in the in the learning field. Thank you very much. We will uh, see in a moment when we during the, the closing words uh, how Jovital is planning to contribute to this process of uh, as you say uh, raised interest and, and subsequent motivation but now uh, we have one more intervention, and I'm still I'm asking also the again the participants to use the chat if you want to ask questions. Uh, we have now uh, Arinola uh, Adefila and Alun de Winter from uh, Coventry University, and Nada Trunk. Uh, after this, uh, who will be giving us uh, an insider testimonial as uh, from Jovit as being Jovital partners on uh, a number of things that have taken place within Jovital, namely staff training and, and, and e-tutors uh, work and qualification, because as you know, I said before that this is, a, is not a, an expensive nor a difficult thing to do, but you need to engage your staff, of course, teaching staff, you need to engage your, your e-tutors. So let's hear from, uh, from the colleagues uh, how, um, how this staff has been engaged and can be engaged. Arinola, will you start or Alan? Yeah. Yes, okay. I will start. Thank you. So I'm asking, I'm asking uh, you to be as brief as possible because we have to close for technical reasons at 12.30 and we, I, I would need like five minutes for the conclusion. So please, if you can be sh short, that would be super appreciated. Sure, I'll let Ariola present. Um, you'll probably hear in a very few seconds, I've got a pneumatic drill outside my window. So I'll, I'll be quiet <laughs> and let Ariola talk. <laughs> Thank <All right>. you, Ariola. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Yeah, so I will speak very quickly. I will try to keep it to about five minutes. And um, Fabio, so we'd be very pleased to, do, to, to hear that. Hello, everybody. So my name is Ariola. I'm presenting on behalf of Alan, like you just heard with his pneumatic drill, and um, Catherine as well. So our presentation is basically about the testimonials of our e-tutors. 
we have, as you have heard already from Eric and Catherine and Adi, um, 27 e-tutors trained in Dresden um, last year. And what we have done as a team is to evaluate their experience. So we have two, um, two um, dimensions to that evaluation. First of all, the experience of the e-learning, of the of the e-tutoring qualification itself, and then their experience of um, being e-tutors at the national um, VCL that took place a few months ago. So you, um, I, we have already said that the e-tutoring experience was basically to, to support the Jordanian from across our five partner universities to understand how to become e-tutors and so that they can learn about motivating individual students and um, um, encouraging them to, um, to work on the, on the VCLs. There are some aspects of it that involve um, conflict management and um, solving problems in different groups. And that was very important for um, the training in Germany, specifically because most of the students were not necessarily um, social science students. So from our evaluation of those e-tutors, one of the key things that they said, um, I think this has been mentioned by um, Adi and um, uh, Mahmoud as well, that um, they appreciated the soft skills that came with that training. So a lot of them were able to understand um, and ex ex experience emotional intelligence um, skills, understanding how to work with conflict management, and obviously the intercultural competencies that we've all been speaking about th um, this morning. You, you would have noticed that the students came from different universities, um, some of them urban, some of them rural, or in different um, parts of Jordan, and that was quite um, essential for them. They, they spoke a lot about how they learned from each other, even though they were in the same country. So VCL has gives gives them this opportunity, and it, the training itself afforded them the opportunity to um, to learn, um, experience how to deal with intercultural differences in a small space. Um, a lot of them thought that the e-tutoring experience was a privileged position because the e-tutor is between the lecturer and the students. And this peer learning experience um, was kind of new for a lot of the, the participants. But there was a, there was, as um, um, we just heard this, um, from the last speaker, that Jordanian universities had, they, they thought that there was lack of infrastructure and resourcing for efficiently um, undertaking VCL in the, in the universities. So these kind of things were quite, um, important for the students. Um, Adi spoke about how the students talk, spoke about um, soft skills. So they talk about learning all sorts of interesting things in, in, in one class. And that was quite important for them. So they, they, can, they kind of said that this was very important to, to undertake the, the virtual learning. And we found that a lot of the students were, were keen on the intercultural experience. So going to Germany, like we just heard, um, learning about a different culture. Most of them said that it was completely different from their own experience. And they learned how to be tolerant, to be respectful, to understand other people, to understand man uh, mindsets, worldviews. And just basically, they were in, for them, it was important that they could put this on their CV. So um, this, we, we found that the students were quite um, thoughtful. They were quite um, thinking ahead of their own careers. And they were, they were um, on, of the opinion that working as e-tutors would, uh, would help them in their, in their careers. After speaking to the, after undertaking the e-tutoring um, experience with the National VCL, we found that a lot of the e-tutors had already started using the practice and the skills they learned in Germany in different areas of their lives. So some of the e-tutors, for, for example, have started working as researchers, you know, uh, in different places. And they were talking about how the experience of the 21st century schools of soft skills that they learned in e-tutoring enabled them and enhance their working, um, their work in their work um, environment. Um, and there was one particular very interesting case of adaptation. Some of, so one, one e-tutor was talking about how, even though they, could, they didn't have this, the, the resources to actually practice virtual co um, collaborative learning, he had, adapted that to his own class um, so that the students could use communication skills with in a WhatsApp group. And he used this WhatsApp platform 
almost as a virtual environment to encourage peer learning, putting the students into groups and encouraging them to, to work together in that process. So this transferable skill was quite interesting to us. We found out that that was um, a quite um, um, interesting way of um, students being adaptable and students being um, innovative. So generally speaking, we, we, we found that the students were engaged, we found that they, that they actually had an enjoyable experience. They liked the fact that they could practice their each each sharing um, some of them um, were able to acknowledge the, the, the challenge, obviously, of e-tutoring students because they, they knew that not all students were able to engage, but there was, I felt that they were able to um, separate the emotional labor um, of working with students and not taking on their own bad practice. So even though the students were not always engaged, the e-tutors e had learned sufficiently from the, from the training how not to feel um, bad or um, negative about those students not engaging. And obviously it helped them to understand their own tutors and lecturers more. So that was a very good experience. Um, finally, I just want to talk about a little bit about the future um, because we asked our e-tutors about this and they said that e-tutoring was very important, um, especially in the post-COVID world. They, uh, they acknowledged how the training was important for them. They thought that it was good for lecturers across Jordan to, you know, understand this process a bit, a lot more, and use it um, 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 uh, um, frequently. They felt that um, soft training, soft soft skills, and the importance of 21st century skills around complex thinking and working together should be embedded in um, higher education as a whole. And they felt that um, VCLs and VLEs were very complementary for teaching and learning practices. So overall, I think it was a good experience and we're looking forward to our e-tutors um, engaging in the international um, VCL, which will happen very soon. And that would involve um, students from Coventry University, Germany and the Jordanian universities. And I guess it would be a good challenge for them to actually um, engage in more intercult intercultural skills. So thank you so much for listening for my quick review talk. Thank you very much also for the speed, Arinola. So we, we heard <clears throat> about the students first, then the tutors, and now we are moving to the staff. Actually, during the project, we had a few staff trainings uh, in order to involve, of course, also the, the ones in charge of the designing, most often the, 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 the teaching process. Uh, Nada, uh, Nada Trunke. Uh, okay, I see you there now. Do you want to tell us something about the staff training? Yes, thank you, Fabio. I will be um, I will be very short, and I would like to uh, to say that as uh, Arinola discussed about the ed tutors, let's say this uh, in, um, investment in the staff, in the staff and the people, either the students, the ed tutors, the academics, and the administrative. I think that it's one of the core of the capacity building project that's all because this is something that will remain okay beside the beside the equipment uh, if i would summarize let's say the basics of the uh, basics of the um, the staff uh, education was devoted to the vcl uh, methodology or didactics and this was run by uh, wisam it was very well accepted by all of the partners and it, they really needed this knowledge and I'm, think, I'm thinking uh, when I see now how they are, how the Jordan's partners are running these uh, uh, VCL um, courses, either the institutional or the national, and now in the preparation for the international one, um, the knowledge that they gain, let's say, face-to-face uh, -face as a frontal knowledge in these seminars will be somehow uh, enrich, enrich now doing in practical this uh, this process of VCL. Uh, pity that we didn't succeed to have the, the seminars in vivo in Jordan, also about the Bologna changes, quality assurance, uh, let's say some experience on the different, let's say, approaches of didactics, which was planned to be done by uh, 
Coventry University and also by our university. So we will see maybe in the next uh, months to discuss if we can move these on the webinars or maybe if we'll be in the beginning of the 21, if there will be a chance to visit, to visit um, Jordan. That's more or less all from my side. Perfect. Thank you very much uh, to be concise. And I, I totally agree with you that, uh, I mean, capacity building projects are about building capacities and building capacities among the people. And we can see in, in, in Jovital that this has happened pretty, pretty extensively. Now, we, we don't want to keep you uh, <clears throat> after for, for more time than 12.30 as planned. So uh, I would like to ask you to get in touch uh, with, uh, uh, with some who, put, uh, who has put uh, his email address uh, uh, earlier in the chat with some if you want to paste it again so you can um, uh, so that if you are interested as universities, either from Jordan or from outside Jordan, to, to become a, a partner uh, to, to implement the, the Jovital approach into your, into your university in the future, please feel free to get in touch with us. With some is a central contact point, and from Unimed, we will also support with the non Jordanian partner to try to give it a as much uh, resonance uh, uh, as possible. And if you have questions, uh, technical questions about the model also, please refer to Wissam because as you've seen Wissam and Eric especially have been doing this for many years. And so, and also of course towards the Daniel Pad. So let, let's use Wissam as a central contact point now, and then uh, he will be moving the, the questions to, 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 to the others. I would like to uh, give, uh, um, to go back a second to the presentation of Mohammed, uh, because actually it seems that something is moving in, in Jordan in terms of the, both the perception of policymakers and leaders in universities about the, not only the relevance, but also the feasibility, I would say, of, uh, of e-learning and it on the, on the fact that e-learning on itself can be a methodology that can be used within, uh, within uh, courses and, and degrees. And I anticipated before that as Jovital, we are trying to contribute to this process. So what we are trying to do, and I'll be sharing my, my screen now, we, are, we have uh, developed together with the partners a, let me see if I find it, uh, here it is, yes. We have developed together with the partners a, a can you see now this uh, position paper? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we okay. see it. Okay, thank you. So this, as you can see, is a super premiere. We were thinking on whether to share it or not in its uh, current uh, final draft with you and we decided to do it to also to ask for your for your comments now and uh, and also when this document will be will be launched. So this is a, is a document from the title you can see virtual collaborative learning the way to go for quality higher education in Jordan and it is a position paper so it wants to basically uh, state in one page one or two pages no more than that the uh, the position of the Jovital partners with respect to this issue based on what we have learned on what we have seen you have, you have seen that we we have been doing a lot of research and a lot of evaluation about uh, all the process of, of Jovital. And actually this is a, is, a, is a document that is mostly addressed uh, to Jordanian uh, higher education policymakers. It might be also, uh, it might also transform to something more regional. So we might also uh, think of something similar for uh, for the, for the South Med region or for the countries also around Jordan. And here, these are some, uh, uh, some points on which we all agree about the, the, the benefits of virtual collaborative learning when properly organized, as we have done in Jovital, the relevance of it, especially in this specific uh, moment, and the fact that we believe that virtual collaborative learning should become a stable component of e-learning in Jordan. So these are, these are just three three statements and we would like this uh, this uh, document this position paper not only to be uh, to be pushed forward by us as jovital so by by the project but also by as many 
stakeholders as possible. So a, a moment will come, most probably in the next months, when we will be asking uh, all Jordanian universities and all participants to our events like this one and like the trainers to to support this, this statement. We still don't know if you're asking for signatures, if you're asking for a pledge, we are still working on this. But the, the idea is that this wants to be a bit of a, one of the components of this movement toward not only more relevant e-learning, but more, uh, I would say, system, systemic e-learning within Jordan, given the specific uh, lucky moment uh, that we are having. Uh, I would like, it seems we have a few more minutes, we don't have to close at 12.30, so I would like now to open the floor to everybody for you to comment on what you heard in this uh, webinar and uh, also on this idea of the position paper, if you think that this is something, I don't know, so if uh, Eric as project coordinator or Mohammed or uh, the others, the other partners want to say something about this. Uh, this is, a, we believe, something important to give a sign of not only of, uh, you know, what we did worked, but what we did can become systemic. And then, of course, uh, it will be not up to us to decide, but uh, this is the idea. So I would like to open the floor for uh, anybody. You can feel free to speak if you want, uh, if you want to take the floor. I think we can have a few more minutes uh, for a few interventions. Thank you, Fabio. I, I think I will, I, I'll be short. In fact, uh, uh, thank you first of all for, for this opportunity. It's uh, the first time that I uh, heard about this project and that seems to be very interesting to, to our university. In fact, we conducted in the past some other projects, uh, main, mainly about uh, master degrees in our university with the uh, JGU and with the Fila University also and Birzeit University and the German ones. So uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, happy to be with you, and I'm ready to uh, to share the, the the experience we we made in Tunisia, and also your experience in our university. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Karguri. I think it's uh, the Tunisian uh, environment uh, is also going through th through some transformation, so it would be nice maybe to test uh, or to to explore this possibility also, not only in your university, but uh, possibly also why not with the with a similar project uh, focusing on uh, on Tunisia. Thank you very much. Other ideas, even critics, eh, please, if you think that uh, there is something we should change, uh, we should, uh, or some different things that we could do, this is the moment, uh, this is the third objective, the objective of the feedback for us. I know this has been a long event, so silence is uh, very understandable and lunch is also coming over. So I don't know if uh, Catherine, from your uh, um, Coventry perspective, you are pretty far from Jordan. I mean, in, uh, not, not of course in, uh, in, uh, in uh, collaboration terms because you are a member, but the situation in the UK and in Jordan is very different. Like, I mean, so how do you see this uh, possible pledge, this possible process of uh, gathering interest? I think it's, it's great to share this position statement. Um, I'm all for it. And uh, I think it's just really a, a, an opportunity to validate and show a commitment to what is going on in the project and what its aims and ambition are. And uh, I think if there's opportunity, you know, that our consortium um, you know, we're co-curating this together, but also that we can push it out to wider colleagues within the sector to uh, to commit to. I think this is great. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we had a, a wonderful visit to Jordan. Um, we've, we've visited a lot of the universities um, and uh, it's, um, it's always, um, you know, great to be part of these projects where we learn with and from one another. Um, so yes, I, I just wanted to to thank all the partners, and it's been good to be here today and listen to everyone and all the work that's gone on. And thanks to you also, Fabio, for facilitating us so well. Um, and uh, 
helping keep the thread going amongst all the efforts. So thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Last moment for a uh, last comment, if we want uh, one more minute. Okay, so if not, uh, let me just tell you that this webinar, ah, yes, Eric, please. <laughs> Of course, the last word has to exactly. be mine. I exactly. want to thank you also, Fabio, for that moderation. It was very elegant, very fluently, and I like this webinar. And I just want to mention that besides that fantastic position paper, I think in future, when funding has ended, a network like Unimed is providing will be crucial to, to roll out the experience we gained together in the Jovital project and to reach out to the potential additional uh, um, other international partners uh, having participated today or getting in touch with us in the next half year on the project. So it is fantastic that we have Unimate on board and thank you again, Fabio. Thank you, actually. Most of the work in this has been done by Christina who is now uh, hiding behind the picture, but uh, the thing goes mostly to her and to the staff. But uh, yeah, this is exactly the, the logic. I mean, to me, ah, there, there she is. Ciao, Cristina. I don't know if you want to comment as well. It seems that when the video is not on, you're, you're, you don't exist, but I've been here since the very that's, beginning. That's called the Video Society. The so video we are all in this. Thank you, Fabio. It's been, it's been really interesting uh, webinar and I'm happy that we have also um, other uh, members of UNIMED from Lebanon, Tunisia and, and Italy and yes it would be really good to expand and extend what we are doing in Jordan to other countries to increase what we are doing within, within this, this community while waiting for the COVID-19 to be over and meet again. <laughs> I think that yeah we are going we're getting very um, busy and uh, tired about screen time, but those type of methods where you can really engage with people from different countries, culture, disciplines, universities um, is, is really effective. It can really make learning more meaningful. Thank you very much. So full commitment on behalf of UNIMED to multiply and to extend this uh, as any useful thing for our teachers and learners to other countries and contexts. Thank you, Wissam, for posting again the blog of the, the website of Jovital, where we have, we have also some testimonials, uh, video testimonials from uh, students and teachers that can be useful also for you to advocate with your leadership to to experiment this into, into your university. Thank you all for participating and uh, see you in the next occasions and be ready to comment and to participate in our position paper. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye everyone.